I record the lectures. It's not so much so that you can hear me. I know that you can hear me, but I record the lectures. And you're testing. Test, test. Test, oh. Test, test. It's not so much so that you can hear me, but it's really just so that uh, I can record the lectures and put them online. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. All right, so I sent out this website. This is the course website. Everybody's gotten this or seen it? Yeah, if you haven't, it's on Moodle. It's linked right up at the top page of your, your Moodle page for this. Office hours here. Uh, I'm here to help you succeed in this course. And often, if you're having trouble in the course, the best way for us to deal with that is us to sit down and sort of me figure out where your problem is and help you in that. It's my job to help you succeed in this course. You follow me on that? Or they pay me lots and lots of money to help you succeed in this course. Not lots and lots, but they pay me well enough to help you do well in this course. So if you're not doing well, please let me do my job. So come see me. Office hours are here. But even if it's not office hours, as long as I'm not in class, please do come see me. Okay? Uh, this syllabus, I'm not going to read through the whole syllabus, but I just want to go through a few things with you. Just stress a few things. First of all, this book is on Amazon. I sent this link out to you. You can only find it through Amazon. And... Uh, if you haven't gotten it yet, it looks like this. Can I see yours that quick? It's like this paperback bit. It's really just a workbook, and you'll find all the notes that we'll use in the class here, uh, places where we'll just sort of fill in the notes. So it'll save you a lot of time if you don't have it. Uh, if you do get it, rather, it'll save you a lot of time because you can just sort of follow along, and, and I'll put it up on the, the screen and fill it in. And then I'll have all the homework questions. And then also in the back, it has all the clicker questions that we'll be asking in class as well as some old exams for the class as well. Okay? So this is the workbook. It's on Amazon. The link is in the syllabus. And I've also sent out the link a couple times. If you're an athlete and you're on scholarship, you get your books on scholarship, you can see the folks, the, academic, the uh, athletic advisors or whatever, they have funds to provide for things like this. So if you need help with that, just let me know. Uh, let's see, outcome objectives there, our content. These are our exam dates. You should go ahead and put these on your calendar. We'll have the exam. Our exam won't be in this room. It'll be in the auditorium in Pelsa because it's more comfortable there. Uh, there'll be a, I usually start the exams at 7.15, so it gives you guys a little bit longer. And then there's the final as well. These are not going to change unless there's some disaster, okay? So go ahead and put those in your calendar. Homework assignments, I'll show you that in just a bit. Class participation, those will come from your clickers. So during the class, I'll put questions up on the board and you'll answer them. And the points towards those will go towards your class participation. Now listen, if you come to class regularly, you'll max out those class participation points. You get up to 50 points. If you come to class and you participate, you'll max those out. If you miss a few days, eh, it's not a big deal, okay? If you miss like half the semester, then you're not going to get those points. You follow me? It's not that hard to get all of them, so uh, just make sure you come to class. And it also help you with the exam because we'll have multiple choice questions on the exam that are very similar to the clicker questions that you'll ask in class. Those questions are in your book. Either they're spread throughout the chapter or there's an appendix in the back that also has some of them as well. So that's why those clickers are important, and uh, they'll count towards 50 points of your class participation. If there's any disturbances, I don't expect that to be the case, uh, then I'll deduct three points, and that means the maximum that you can get will be 47 points. The uh, exams will be a mixture of multiple choice and free response. I'll show you some examples, okay? And we'll work through old exam questions during the class, and you'll have them uh, for your, you know, at your disposal. They're on the website. Makeups, if you miss, if you miss for an unexcused reason, I deduct 15 points from your, from your exam grade right off the top. And then I continue to deduct points for every day that you don't contact me. So if you miss, you need to contact me right away, okay? If it's for an excused reason, I require some documentation, doctor's note, uh, university note, or whatever, and I won't have any penalty on that. But you need to contact me right away regardless. And if you know that you're going to be out, like for a university event, then please contact me beforehand. You can take the exam the day before or, the, you know, earlier or whatever. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. Uh, attendance, I don't take attendance, uh, although for the this thing that I'm passing around, that's for the university. But 
obviously with the clickers and stuff like that, you really need to come to class. And frankly, students that don't come to class, they don't do very well in the class. Okay, so come to class. I know it's 730, and probably about two-thirds of you really hate 730 classes. Right. It's really good for you. Because you get good parking, right? Yeah, you get good parking. That's, that's probably about all. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the drop date, Friday, 23rd October. Hopefully we won't have any drops, but uh, we should have three exams. We will have three exams by then. I think I scheduled three exams. Just double check. Yeah, we our third exam is right before the drop date. So you'll know very well how you're headed in the course. So really love to have no Ds or Fs this semester. Right? Yeah, I wanted two, wouldn't you? Yes, we can do this, I'm certain. So that's our syllabus. There's an addendum here that talks about what we'll do in case of hurricanes or whatever. Uh, in short, we'll continue on with class as it is online. I have some resources online we'll use. And then also, if you have a, a disability or whatever, work with you however I can. The testing centers here are really great. So please see me uh, right away. This is how to make an A. This is advice from previous students. In short, they say come to class, work the homework, work through the old exams, and also study these, these questions that we do in class. I'll let you read that on your own. Uh, looks like they're kind of old, but they're still valid because the exams are still pretty much the same. If you want honors credit, there's some possibilities here for honors credit. Just see me. Uh, and if you have an idea for yourself, how many of you are honors students? Okay, a few of you. Yeah, uh, so you can, in any class, you can get honors credit. You have to petition for it, and you have to do, like, an extra project. So you can take a look at that and tell me what you think. Here's a grade calculator. This is just an Excel spreadsheet. You can plug in your grades and figure out what your average is. Pretty useful. There's the textbook. Here we'll have concept tests. That's the little clicker questions. I'll post the answers afterwards. It'll be a good resource for you to study the exams. I'll show you that more as the class goes on. Uh, there's an equation sheet. You won't get this till after chapter five, but you can see it nonetheless. Okay, old exams. This is a website where you can find every exam that I've ever given, all the way back to fall 05. So, for example, if you go to fall 2014, this is how the exam looks. There's about 20 multiple choice or 15 multiple choice that are conceptual, and then there are free response questions that follow usually four to six free response questions. It usually takes you an hour and 15 minutes to finish it, which is why I let you start at 7.15. Um, also on there are videos of me just working through the exam. So it's just me going through the exam with my voice working through. Those are pretty useful. And students that have done well in the past said that they did well because they studied those old exams. I won't reuse those exam questions. You'll get new questions. But they'll look similar. They're covering the same material. So it's good practice for you. I recommend that you go through and you practice those exams without looking at the solutions. And then you go back and check yourself and see how you did. Okay? That's a good practice anyway as a student. Okay. Um, this is the homework. On the homework, this is in your book. But you can also find it here. You can print them out if you like. And then there are also videos solutions to me working through that homework, just like with the exams. I don't take up the homework, but they really do help you with the exam to go through the homework problems and make sure that you know how to do it. Okay? All right. We'll also have some supplemental problems as we go through, and I'll, I'll hand those out. This is our screencast. If you do miss class, I'll, I'll upload the video of the class, which will include the audio, which is why I'm wearing this cool microphone. I don't like it. Yeah, so uh, so you'll be able to catch up. Again, I don't take attendance. I don't uh, penalize you for not coming to class, except, of course, you don't get those those uh, clicker points. Uh, but if you do miss for whatever reason, you can always catch up with what we did on that on that website. Casey Kramer, Trevor Adams. What's your name? Casey? Casey? You can sign in, please. Okay. Um, and then some of we don't have a textbook for this course, but I know some of you are textbook kind of people, right? How many of you are textbook people? I found that usually in a class only a couple people really like the textbooks, and that's okay. I understand. Uh, if you want a textbook, I have a whole bunch of old textbooks in my office. You can come by and borrow one if you feel like you'd like to have one. 
and I'll give you one that I follow sort of in order. All, all the physics textbooks, they all go basically in the same order. There are also some really nice online textbooks. Like, for example, this is OpenStax. It's a free book. You can, you can buy a printed copy, but you can also just download a PDF if you want to look at that and follow along in a textbook. Now, this is not a calculus-based textbook, but it still covers a lot of the same stuff that we do except for the calculus part. Okay? Thanks, Stacy. All right. Did anybody uh, not sign? Practically everybody's here. Listen, I found that the students in this class are like some of the best students on campus. Did you know that? You seriously are. Like your ACT scores are higher than anybody else on campus. You have like some of the highest GPAs on campus. So I expect good things from you. Right? And you should too. Like you should expect good things from yourself. Okay, uh, that's the class. In short, this is a calculus-based class. How many of you are in Calculus 1 right now? Like you're about to start Calculus 1. And those of you that have had it already? Okay, good. We'll use this semester Calculus 1, 2, and 3. But I'll give you everything that we need. We're going to use derivatives right off the bat and integrals, which you don't get to till Calculus 2. And then we'll later in the semester, we'll do volume integrals, 3D integrals, 3D integrals which you, I think Calc 3 is what you had Calc 3 yet? Y'all do that in Calc 3, right? Yeah, right. And then we'll also do some vector calculus, uh, cross products, dot products. We'll get those chapter 5. But don't sweat it. Like, if you, have, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, I'm going to give you exactly what you need to know. Right? All right. You trust me? Sort of. You sort of don't really trust me at all, right? Yeah. Okay. It's going to be fine. Um, all right. Let me get my note here. All right, we're going to do a couple things now. I want you to take out a sheet of paper, and I want you to um, consider this question. And I just want you to write your name, first of all. Where's my pen? Write your name and your major. And then I want you to consider um, what do you value. I want you to answer that question in a couple of sentences. Let me tell you the reason for it, though, because somebody did a study one time, and they said that students who take a difficult class, and you know what, you're going to have more difficult classes than this one, but it's not an easy class, but students that take a difficult class tend to do better if at first they're posed with the question of why are they in that class, All right? Now, some of you are chemistry majors, and you're in this class because it's going to help you in PCHEM. Or some of your biology majors, and you just, you're going to need it for the MCAT, or you're going to need it for this or that. Or some of you just, you're required to take this class. And some of you are math majors, I think, and maybe you just sort of like seeing how math is applied in the real world. So think about sort of what do you value, and why are you in this class, or why you're in school in general, okay? And then as you go along the semester and as things get difficult, maybe you can remember back why it is that you're here and that it's because of something that you really value and that you consider very important. Okay? So we're going to do that. Name, major, and what do you value on a sheet of paper. And while we're doing that, I'm going to take some pictures. So y'all go ahead and uh, work on that. I'm going to take this question down, right? Name, major, what do you value? Y'all got that? Name, major, what do you value? I want to learn your names, so I'm going to take your pictures. What you're going to see are some uh, slides that come up. They'll have your name on it. It's in alphabetical order. So you know how that works, A, B, C, D, right? Um, so if y'all could come up like in an expeditious manner. And I just want you to stand underneath the screen, underneath your name, like sort of a lineup, if you will. So for example, here going to work for me? No, it's not. So, for example, Zachary Adamitz is going to stand, huh? Adamitz is going to stand right here and then everybody else next to him. Y'all read this. You can see the words. Y'all come on up, please, if, you're, if your name is up there. Listen, these pictures shall never see anywhere but my office. I don't put them online. I print them out, and they go into my little Facebook. Like, I have an actual book with pictures in it. That's a Facebook, not the website. Okay? Trevor's not here, right? 
All right. All right. One, two, three. All right. Ariana, could you help me with something? Y'all can have a seat except for Ariana. If you could just sit in that black chair and just uh, go screen. I see there's a little arrow on the screen. If you could use the mouse and advance to the next slide for me. All right. That's going to be Brett, Desiree, Cress Cressidy? Cresseed, of course. Cresseed and uh, Taylor and Derek Stig. Brett, Desiree, Cresseed. Taylor and Derek. All right, one, two, three. All right, Derek, if you could uh, go to the next slide. Just press that little arrow there. Okay, Brennan, Kayla, thank you. Ryan, Brandon, and Lindsay. Brennan, Kayla, Brian, Brandon, Lindsay. One, two, three. All right. Lindsay, if you could go to the next slide, please. Press that arrow. There you go. All right. Brandon, Zachary, Stephen, uh, Jane. Is that what? How do you say it? Janae. All right, cool. Uh, and Tamara. Stephen, there you are. All right, one, two, three. All right, thank you. And Tamara, if you could go to the next slide for me. Just press the arrow down. Oh, uh, use the mouse, yeah. Use the mouse and hit the arrow. Casey, Brooke, Gary, Emily, and Ethan. Ethan, Gary. All right. One, two, three. Thank you. Ethan, could you hit the arrow with the mouse? Cody, Thomas, Heather, Lazarus, and Claire. All right. One, two, three. Claire, would you mind just staying up there and doing the mouse for me? Sydney, Ainsley, Ashley, David, and Shane. If you have a different name that you go by, please let me know, okay? All right. One, two, three. Very nice. Jennifer, Kylie, Megan, and Taylor. Did I not get, folks? One, two, three. All right. I think that's all. Thank you, Claire. Anybody I didn't get? Anybody want to take another picture? All right. And again, they won't go on the Internet. Nobody will ever see them but me, okay? So I really appreciate that. Um, all right. Can I have your... Your little sheets of paper. Let's see. So Claire, I'll come back. Lindsay, Heather, Brent, Brennan, and your uh, Ariana, Ashley, Sydney. Is that right? That's okay. Let's see. Brandon. All right. Ethan. Brian. All right. Megan, Brandon, whoop. and uh, Taylor, I think. Emily, Thomas, 
Thomas, right? Right. And Stephen. How do you say your last name again? Maybe I'll go. We sort of. All right. James. Brooke. Sorry, Brooke. Eric. Thank you. And uh, Janae, right? Okay. Is that do you go by Zach or do you go by Zach? Okay. Taylor. All right, Gary. Ainsley. Taylor. Shiamarek. Kayla. David. Casey. All right. Lazarus, is that right? All right. Okay. Zachary. Zach. Zane, right? Kasid. Kasid. Kasuri. Brett. Cody. Jennifer and Riley. Oh, good. Thank you. And that's uh, Lindsay and Brennan. All right, folks. Um, one other thing. What are you, you guys? Are I saw a lot of your chemistry. How many of you are chemistry majors? Okay, good. We have a good bunch of chemistry majors. And then I know I'm getting a lot of geomatics majors. How many of you are geomatics? So it's like this class. You should move over here. <laughs> All right. And uh, what else do we have in here? A few biology peppered throughout. Okay. All right, now biology usually takes the 101 class. I'm okay if you stay in this class. Next semester, you're going to have a little trouble because uh, the Calc 2 is required for the second semester of this class. But if you go through this class and you do well, I usually allow those students to go on into the 202. So if you want to do that, I'm okay with that. Usually, though, biology majors don't take Calc 2, and so you don't meet the prerequisites for the second semester. But if you take this class, you basically get all the calculus you need for the second semester. So I allow that. All right, and then what other majors do we have? Pre-engineering, a couple, a few. All right, you really need to make sure that you check with your, your school where you want to go into an engineering program and make sure this is the right course for you and that they'll take it. Now, they're supposed to take it, okay? But check with your engineering college if you know where you want to go. You all know where you want to go? And they they said that they will take the class. Okay, I would get it in writing, an email or whatever. But sometimes they like to change their mind. LSU, sometimes they take it and sometimes they don't, but I would get it in writing. Okay? Any of you going to UL? You want to UL for engineering? Have you talked to them about taking the course? You what? Okay. I'd get it in writing, just an email if you don't have it in writing yet. Okay? Because a verbal thing, like people forget and they. All right. I just want to make sure that it carries on, that all the work that you do here doesn't go for naught. Uh, the state has a matriculation matrix, and we are supposed to exchange courses easily. But people don't like giving up their courses at their universities, and that they, they prefer that students take those courses at their universities. So make sure that that you have agreement, and not just verbal agreement, but something in writing. Uh, this class is typical for engineering majors. Some of you engineering majors might be able to get by with a 101, but mostly it's this class you need. And what else do we have major-wise? Anything else? Any math majors? No? Geomatics, chemistry, pre-engineering, and uh, what was the other one? Oh, biology. All right. Okay, good. All right. Um, well, let's get started then. Just give me just a second. I forgot to bring up something. Uh, give me just a second, okay?
Okay. I hear about that guy that I read about in the paper this morning. His entire left side of his body he lost. He was in an accident. Cut off his left arm and his and his left leg. Y'all read about that this morning? Huh? He did survive, yeah. In fact, he's all right now. You don't get it. You don't get it, do you? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so let's see. The first chapter, you might have seen a lot of this already, and we'll do our little calculus primer, okay, stuff that you'll use. But we're going to go through it fairly quickly. You'll see it a lot in the um, multiple choice questions, but then we'll also have some free response questions, basic stuff like Sig Figs and dimensional analysis and hopefully stuff that you did in high school or maybe even uh, middle school. Uh, so first of all, when we're making measurements, we have standards of measurement for length, mass, and time. Let me bring down the light a little bit. Lazarus, you can see okay? Yeah. All right. Um, we have standards for length, mass, and time. Anytime we make a measurement, we're going to use those three basic quantities, length, mass, and time. We'll see some other basic quantities as we go along. Next semester, we'll bring in charge, and there are a couple other sort of ones that we may or may not use. But right now, in this semester, which is largely mechanics, we'll use length, mass, and time. Uh, we're going to use the SI system, the Système International, it's French. It's the International System of Measurements. Um, and in that system, the current unit of measurement for length is, of course, the, the meter, right? You all know this. Meter's about three feet. It's a little bit longer than a yard. But this standard has changed over time. In 1799, it was one ten millionth the distance. from the equator to the North Pole. That's not a very good standard, right? Because that standard is just not really accurate, right? The measuring the distance from the equator to the North Pole, that can change, whether you're measuring it over open water or you're measuring it over mountains or whatever. It's also not a very easy distance to measure, to measure the distance from the equator to the North Pole very accurately. So it's not a very good measurement, or not a very good standard, because it's just not very accurate. Now, until 1960, it was the length of a particular bar. This bar happened to be in France. Not the kind of bar like where you go to imbibe or whatever, but the kind of bar that's just like a metal bar and it is in a lab in France somewhere. So until 1960, it was the length of a particular bar. This is not a very good measurement, or not a very good standard, because it's not accessible to everyone. So it's uh, the first one's not accurate. It was accessible, this distance to everyone, but it's not very accurate, so it doesn't make a very good standard. And until 1960, this length of a particular bar, they had a physical bar, and they said, this is a meter, all right? And that's just not very, that's not accessible to all. And now that the standard for measurement that we have is the distance that light travels in a certain amount of time. Uh, that number, you don't need to know it, but I'm just going to write it up here. In a particular amount of time, uh, it's 1 over 299,792,458 seconds. It's one meter light will travel in a vacuum one meter in this amount of time. This number, by the way, as probably most of you know, is what you all recognize it as the speed of light. Right, so light travels one meter in the inverse of that. So this is a great standard because it's very accurate. It's very accessible, actually, because everybody has access to light. And despite what you might think, it's really easy to measure the speed of light and to measure the distance that it travels in a particular amount of time. 
any undergraduate student, all you really need is a rotating mirror and a laser to measure the speed of light. It's very simple. Uh, so it's accessible to all, and it's very accurate, and it's also unchanging. So it's accurate, it's accessible to all, and it's unchanging. And those are three qualities that we'll look for in standards and uh, that scientists do look for when they're trying to find standards to describe a certain measurement. Now, we're using a particular, a particular type of system in the SI system. We're using the MKS system. MKS just stands for meters. And we're doing length, mass, and time. What do you think the K stands for? Kilograms, right? Kilograms, and then S stands for seconds. That's the most commonly used variant of the SI system. But as chemists, sometimes you'll use what system? Do you all know? Well, no, moles is a different thing. But instead of using the MKS system, meters, kilograms, and seconds, and I know astronomers use this too, sometimes you'll use the CGS system. We're not going to use it in this class, but CGS stands for centimeters, grams, and seconds, right. So sometimes you'll use the CGS system, but not in this class. All right, for mass, the current unit of measurement is the kilogram. I'm going to abbreviate it as kg. And uh, the standard is a particular cylinder in France. They have this cylinder. It's like titanium or something, and it's made out of, uh, and it's in France, and they say this is a kilogram. All right, this is not that cylinder. Uh, in fact, the cylinder is quite a bit bigger than this, but this is a kilogram. I'm going to pass it around, and so you can just sort of get a feel for what a kilogram is. Kilogram is a couple pounds, basically. A uh, person, typical person, weighs about uh, 70 kilograms or so. It's about two and a half pounds. So a typical person weighs about 70 kilograms or has a mass of about 70 kilograms. Part of this chapter is just knowing what these quantities are. Goodness, bless you. Uh, so we all know what a meter is. A meter is about this long. You need to know what a kilogram is as well, sort of roughly in your mind, just cemented in your mind, how much is a kilogram? Two, two and a half pounds, if you know the pounds pretty well. So I'll pass this around. Take a look at it. Uh, what is the problem with having a particular cylinder in France as a standard. Remember, we had three qualities of standards, accessible, accurate, and unchanging. What are the, What is the problem with having a particular? It's not accessible to everyone. Now, what they do with that kilogram is they take it, make copies of it, and they ship it all out to different labs. But it, it's not accessible to you. Like, if you showed up in France or in D.C. where they keep a copy of it, they would not let you see it. And then you'd be like, well, it's a kilogram. Right? So it's not accessible to everyone. What's something else that could be potentially wrong with it? Well, it's pretty accurate, actually, for a kilogram, but it's not unchanging. Right? Now, I have a little video I'm going to share with you. Some of you might have seen this before. But the kilogram, those little cylinders, that, that cylinder that they have in France, they found that the mass is actually changing. A little bit, not very much at all, but enough to be a serious problem. And so what they're doing right now is they're trying to figure out a new standard for the kilogram. And the standard that they're gonna, gonna create, or what they're hoping to create, is based on the mass of a silicon atom. And, and then that's accessible to everyone, the mass of a silicon atom. And uh, it's also very accurate, and it's also unchanging. So the kilogram is losing mass. And I have a video here to show you. I'll show these videos. You might see a, a basic multiple choice question on the test about sort of the, the idea behind the standard for the kilogram. You need to know that it's a cylinder now, and they're trying to make it into this based on the mass of a silicon atom. This is a little video. It's from Veritasium. You ever seen Veritasium? You ever watched that YouTube channel? Nobody's ever seen it? Seriously? The Veritasium channel? Isn't it great? Yes. Yes is the right answer to that. It's a really, yeah. Uh, because it has a, a very ordered crystalline structure, the video will talk about it. But yeah, it's because of its its uh, structure. 